Where do the Kurds really come from? For centuries, this question has puzzled historians and scientists. Some say the Kurds are descendants of the ancient Medes, the forgotten empire builders of the East. Others believe their roots go much deeper, reaching back to the very first civilizations of Mesopotamia, the cradle of human history. But now, for the first time, DNA is giving us real answers. And what scientists have discovered about the genetic origin of the Kurdish people is truly shocking. So stay with me until the end, because we're about to uncover the hidden story of Kurdish ancestry, a story that's been buried in the mountains for thousands of years. And before we dive in, let me ask you a question. Do you believe the Kurds are the direct descendants of the ancient Medes? Yes or no? Tell me your answer in the comments below. When researchers analyzed samples from Kurdish populations across Iraq, Iran, and Turkey, they noticed something strange. Despite being spread across four countries, the Kurdish samples looked remarkably similar. Their DNA showed a shared ancestry, a common genetic foundation that stood apart from all neighboring groups. The Kurds weren't just an accident of geography. They were the descendants of an ancient, unified population that had lived in these mountains for thousands of years. Most Kurdish men carried markers from haplogroups like J2 and G2, both deeply rooted in the ancient Near East. These are the same lineages found in the very heart of early farming civilizations, the people who built the first villages, planted the first crops. It means the ancestors of today's Kurds likely walked these same mountains when agriculture itself was just being born. Long before Persia, long before Arabia, even before the Bible. But the story doesn't stop there, because Kurdish DNA also carries whispers of other worlds. Some lineages trace back to the Indo-European steppe migrations, those waves of nomadic tribes who swept across Eurasia thousands of years ago, spreading languages and cultures that shaped much of Europe and South Asia. In the Kurdish genome, you can see a delicate mix, the deep roots of the Fertile Crescent, intertwined with the winds of the steppe. It's as if the Kurdish people stand exactly at the meeting point of two great human stories, the first farmers of the south and the ancient wanderers of the north. And this blend may explain something profound about Kurdish culture, a civilization both deeply settled and fiercely independent. Now here's where the real shock came. Some Kurdish populations, especially in the western regions, showed unexpected genetic links not to Arabia or Persia, but to southern Europe, to places like Greece, Italy, and the Balkans. That's not what anyone predicted. It suggests ancient contact between Kurdish ancestors and Mediterranean peoples, possibly through Bronze Age trade or migrations. In other words, the genetic story of the Kurds isn't isolated. It's woven into the broader tapestry of the entire Old World, stretching from the mountains of Iran to the shores of the Aegean Sea. To understand that core, scientists turn to archaeology and history. Who were the first people to live in these mountains? The oldest clues point to the Hurrians, an ancient people who built early city-states across northern Mesopotamia more than 4,000 years ago. Some scholars believe the Kurds could be their modern descendants. Then came the Medes, an Indo-Iranian people who rose to power around 700 BC founding one of the first empires to challenge Assyria. Many historians connect the Medes to the origins of the Kurdish identity. Even the name Kurd itself evolved from ancient tribal names of that time. When you look at the genetic evidence, these theories suddenly make sense. The blend of ancient Near Eastern and Indo-European ancestry found in modern Kurds fits perfectly with what we know about the Medes. So, in a way, modern Kurds may represent something extraordinary. The living bridge between the earliest farmers of Mesopotamia and the great Indo-European migrations that reshaped Eurasia. The Kurdish homeland, the Zagros Mountains, is one of the most isolated regions in the Middle East. Its valleys are deep, its passes narrow, its winters harsh. Throughout history, when conquerors swept through the lowlands, many Kurdish communities retreated higher into the mountains. That isolation became a shield. It protected their language, their culture, and genes. So while empires rose and fell around them, 
the genetic identity of the Kurdish people stayed surprisingly intact. Every great story has a turning point, and for scientists studying the Kurdish genome, that moment came when they compared Kurdish DNA to surrounding populations. The results didn't just surprise them, they shattered expectations. The Kurdish people aren't simply a branch of Persian, Arab, or Turkic ancestry. In fact, their genetic roots stretch back thousands of years deeper, to a time before those civilizations even existed. When scientists dug deeper, they found even more astonishing details. A few Kurdish samples carried ancient markers linked to the very first Neolithic farmers of Anatolia, the people who pioneered agriculture more than 10,000 years ago. Others bore traces from the mysterious Caucasus hunter-gatherers, a lineage that helped shape much of early Eurasia. It means the Kurdish people carry some of the oldest surviving genetic signatures in the world. And yet, alongside those ancient roots are small but clear hints of Indo-European ancestry, from tribes who swept down from the Eurasian steppes around 5,000 years ago. That's why researchers now describe the Kurds as a living bridge, a link between the world's earliest farmers and the later Indo-European civilizations that reshaped history. When researchers compared Kurdish DNA to global populations, they found unexpected similarities, not with Arabia or Iran, but with parts of southern Europe. Traces of shared ancestry with ancient Greeks, Italians, and even Balkan peoples. How is that possible? The answer might lie in forgotten trade routes and migrations, through the Bronze Age, when sailors and merchants connected the Mediterranean world to Mesopotamia. Civilizations like the Minoans, Mycenaeans, and Hittites moved ideas, metals, and unknowingly genes. Over centuries, those exchanges left faint but permanent marks in Kurdish DNA. To truly understand what this all means, you have to look beneath the surface into the world of ancient tribes that once ruled the same lands the Kurds now call home. The Hurrians were among the first. They built cities like Urkesh and Nuzi, high in the northern Mesopotamian plains, over 4,000 years ago. Their language, unlike any known family, may still echo faintly in Kurdish speech patterns today. Then came the Mitanni, who ruled a vast kingdom that stretched from Syria to Iran. They were horse breeders, warriors, and diplomats, a hybrid culture blending local Hurrian elements with Indo-Aryan ones. Their very existence mirrors what we now see in Kurdish DNA, a fusion of the steppe and the fertile crescent. Centuries later, the Medes emerged, another mountain people who helped topple the Assyrian Empire. Many historians have long believed the Kurds are their direct descendants, and genetically, that theory fits remarkably well. The Medes, likely of Indo-Iranian origin, would have merged with older Hurrian and Zagros tribes, creating exactly the kind of genetic mixture seen in today's Kurdish populations. The Kurdish story doesn't begin with the Medes or the Persians. It begins long before history had a name, in the caves and valleys of the Zagros Mountains. Archaeologists have found traces of some of the world's first humans here, in Shanidar Cave, they uncovered the graves of Neanderthals, laid to rest with wildflowers. It's one of the earliest proofs of compassion in our species. Thousands of years later, early Homo sapiens lived in the same caves, hunted the same valleys, and began to tame the land. By 10,000 BC, the people of these mountains were already changing the world. At sites like Zawi Kemi, Jarmo, and Ganj Dare, they planted the first wheat domesticated goats, and built small stone villages, centuries before the rise of Egypt or Sumer. The soil of Kurdistan holds the memory of that revolution, the birth of agriculture itself. It means the ancestors of today's Kurds were among the first farmers, the first builders, the first people to stay. While others wandered, they rooted themselves to the earth. But history didn't stand still. New tribes came, old kingdoms fell, and the mountains became a meeting place of worlds. The ancient Gutians and Lulubi once ruled these ridges, fierce highland tribes who descended to conquer the Akkadian Empire itself. Their names appear on stone reliefs carved 4,000 years ago. 
Later came the Hurrians, who built the first city-states across northern Mesopotamia. They spoke a language unrelated to anything we know today, a voice lost to time, though some believe faint echoes survive in Kurdish speech. And then the Mitanni, who rose between Syria and Iran, charioteers and diplomats who blended local Hurrian culture with Indo-Aryan influence. They worshipped gods with Sanskrit names and trained horses for kings. The DNA evidence matches their story perfectly. Indo-European elements mingling with the deep Near Eastern roots of the Zagros. When the Medes appeared centuries later, they inherited this entire legacy, the blood of farmers, warriors, and wanderers. And when their empire rose to challenge Assyria, the mountain tribes once again stepped into history. That's why modern genetics feels almost poetic. It confirms what the old chronicles hinted. The Kurds are the living heirs of all these forgotten peoples. Language tells the same tale. Kurdish belongs to the Indo-Iranian family, yet it carries older tones beneath its surface. Traces of those pre-Indo-European tongues that once filled the valleys. And just as their language held its own, so did their culture. The tribal confederations of today mirror the alliances of the Medes, independent, proud, mountain-born. Even their mythology carries genetic memory. The legend of Kawa the blacksmith, who rose against tyranny and brought fire back to the people, still burns in the Kurdish soul. Every spring, during Neuros, Kurds light flames on mountaintops to mark the victory of freedom over darkness. It's more than a myth. It's an echo of survival written across millennia. But what makes the Kurdish story truly remarkable is how it connects to the wider world. When scientists compared Kurdish DNA to neighboring populations, the results revealed something unexpected. The Kurdish genetic signature stands at a crossroads, halfway between the Near East, the Caucasus, and Southern Europe. It shares deep ties with Armenians, Persians, and Assyrians, showing that before politics and borders, these peoples were part of one ancient family. Yet at the same time, Kurdish DNA carries subtle links to Southern Europe, what makes the Kurdish story different is its continuity. Most populations in the Middle East, Arabs, Turks, Persians, were shaped by large-scale migrations and conquests. But Kurdish genetics show a remarkable stability across time and geography. Even after centuries of interaction with neighboring peoples, their DNA still carries the same ancient patterns. It's as if the mountains kept whispering the same old song, generation after generation. That's why scientists often call Kurdish ancestry a time capsule, not because it's pure or untouched, but because it holds so many layers of the human past, all in one lineage. If there's one thing history proves, it's that the Kurds have survived everything thrown at them. Empires came and went, Assyrian, Persian, Roman, Ottoman, yet the Kurdish identity endured. And now, genetic science explains why. It's written in their very being. In an age where cultures are lost to time, the Kurdish genome stands as living proof of endurance. A reminder that identity isn't always about power or borders. Sometimes it's about persistence. So why does this matter now, in our time? Because understanding where we come from changes how we see ourselves and how we see each other. For millions of Kurds around the world, this discovery isn't just science. It's validation. It says, you belong to this land. You always have. It transforms their identity from a political question into an ancient truth, one that no border or conflict can erase. The history of the Kurdish people, from the ancient tribes of the Zagros Mountains and the mighty Medes, to empires, migrations, and modern identity, every chapter has left its mark on the Kurdish genetic code. If you've enjoyed this journey through the unique DNA of the Kurdish people, let us know in the comments. Have you ever taken a DNA test and discovered Kurdish roots? Or maybe you've always wondered about the origins of your family's traditions, language, or homeland. Share your stories, we'd love to hear them. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more history and ancestry content, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thanks for watching. And as the Kurds say, 
Spas bo Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.